fact that your home becomes a place of your imprisonment is very intense. I think this type of genre is actually based with something that could really happen. We do have this moment when you see sirens going, or you hear that someone's been evacuated from a building, or there's a fire. You kind of go to the most extreme place of what the hell has happened. It's about fear. It's about being infected. And how do you not get infected? It really pulls you in very subtly initially, and then suddenly you're, you're just in this thing. There's nothing about that movie. It keeps you at arm's length from the experience, which makes it really thrilling. We really wanted a film that would put you in that sort of reality. We are trapped in a building, fighting for our lives, and safety is just through that window pane. very reality based it's it's a subjective camera we're seeing it all through the point of view of the camera today's youtube culture everyone's used to seeing everything recorded and everything from a you know one camera subjective camera perspective when you're confined to what one camera can see you can't see around people you feel like you're a real person in a real space it makes you work it makes you work harder as an actor you got to really be in the moment you gotta really know where you're coming from as the, as the character. We basically are covering five minutes of footage every day in one take. Spend half the day setting up one shot. Every shot is, you know, three to six minutes long. And uh, you have 12 characters in any given shot. The first shot of the day sometimes is like six o'clock. We spend the whole day rehearsing um, and then we'll get a shot off at four or five. Once you're doing it, it's, it's really a challenging and exciting way to work because it depends on everybody kind of pulling their weight. You can't, if one guy messes up, you gotta do the whole takeover again. Everything's gotta work. We wanted to shoot it as close to real time as we could. So we, we have a camera shooting 15 actors sometimes, sometimes with stunts, with effects, with, you know, all sorts of things. And many days we're shooting one shot. The actors are constantly, constantly challenging one another improvisational-wise and one-upping the stakes so that the intensity, A, feels real, which is completely challenging, um, and B, you, you feel the horror and the terror and the suspense of the situation. It feels like a documentary somehow. And that's one thing that John said to us when we started is if we catch you acting, we're going to have to start over. Definitely, as an actor, keeps you on, on, on your toes because you don't want to be the one after a four-minute take, after you've been rehearsing all day long, you don't want to be the one to forget to say something. No, stop! Stop! We've been really lucky on this film with casting. We've assembled a real art house cast on a, on a horror film, which is very, very rare. You're doing the, the master, the wide, and the close-up all in once, so you have to light it all. You have to, the camera has to be right, actors have to be on, and it can be frustrating, and that frustration sort of feeds the fear, I think. This movie is such a unique challenge because every single shot, we're lighting for the wide shot, the medium shot, the close-up, the reverse, and you never know what marks the actors are gonna hit. Ken Sanger had so much to do on this film, too. Another challenge to this film was trying to avoid seeing lights, so, you know, trying to light almost this entire building all through practical lights and, you know, ambient light through the windows and, you know, swooping helicopter lights through the windows and, you know, everything had to be so perfectly timed. You better tell us what the hell's going on. I am not authorized to tell you about this shit. The trick is not really what you see, but it is what you don't see. And there's a really good, delicate balance as to how to handle the blacks in the movie making process. And you handle that with contrast and hard light as much as possible. Let's go. You have three shots, they're all five minutes long and they go from downstairs to upstairs into a room. We tried as much as we could to keep those shots in one long take as possible and tried not to cut if we could. So we came up with various ways to do this, whether it's a simple swish and cutting in the swish or you know hiding it in a little bit of black. There's the scene in the kind of the makeshift triage room, and all the characters in the entire building are in this room. When you look at that scene as it is in the movie, and it's a lot of tricky, you know, real tricky editing in just the camera movements. 
You know, the camera moves a little bit to the left, you, you'll pan and it'll cut to Bernard's character. And then as Bernard's character, we kind of do like a little fake zoom that goes in and it matches the framing of the swish coming out to, you know, another character. And when you watch that scene, there's literally probably 15 cuts in that scene and it plays as one. Yeah, with the frenzied pace of the film and, and with the camera being right in the middle of the action and treating the camera like a character, we realized part of making this all feel real is banging into the camera. I think once they say action, we forget that there's a man there. Like I was like, you know, handling this piece of equipment and we just, if there's a fight, we fight. If there's, you know, pushing involved, it, we push. Because we're shooting HD and there's always this tethered sort of cable coming out of the camera and there's an onboard light that's powered and there's sound, all these cables running out of this camera. And so I think what people don't see is sort of this dance that goes on behind everything. A couple times the camera operator has, has fumbled the camera and uh, <laughs> we've had to take a little time and try and, you know, glue it back together and um, get it working again. But uh, it really helps sell the, the reality of the film when people are pushing the camera out of the way or grabbing onto it or, you know, slamming into it. Um, that, that really makes it feel very real. It's been interesting coming to work every day to the same place. It sort of feels like we're living this movie for, what, the 26 days that we're there? I mean, I sort of had the thought during the first week after we were on our, what, third or fourth 15-hour day, I thought, this is exactly what I need. I need to be thinking I have to get out of this building. It feels like you're actually in an apartment, which is crazy, an apartment building, a nice one. You know, when you build a set of this magnitude that is 35 feet tall, going right up to the grid of a soundstage and control the entire environment, you have the luxury of creating the greatest movie you can make. At the beginning of the story, we wanted to create this sense that there were these windows. It was like the last possible exit. So we made these like frames within frames within frames. So your eye really went to this one window and thinking this is gonna be a way to get out. We tried to make it like it's from the, you know, it could be 1920s, 30s, older building. We there's quite a few different discussions on how far down to take it, whether it should be aged more or not. I personally didn't want to take it too far because I didn't want it to look like a horror film from the beginning of the whole thing. He brought such elements of detail and such love to this, and, and the entire art department has just been phenomenal. This is a, we're gonna call it the sewing room of the building. It's part of the, the back of the building that's rented out. That room is lit with probably 40 mirrors all going through a space six feet wide by, you know, eight inches high. And that was the way I had to light the whole room because of these bulldozer buckets that come down. The set was really a tricky build. I mean, there were so many bits that we wanted to get in this film that were so dependent on the building itself and the set itself. And they were able to, you know, incorporate an incredible, incredible amount of the, of the script and, and action into the design of the, of the set. This is John Dowdle's first studio movie as a director, and uh, we're very happy with his work. He has taken a terrific premise and managed to make it his own. Directing this movie is deceptively hard because it does seem like just a guy running around with a, you know, a camera and really simple lighting, a couple of flashlights or something. But that's not the case. So there's a whole lot of blocking 15 actors in a little tiny space, knowing you can't get any coverage, you can't do any inserts. So everyone's got to perform at the same high level. John is really fantastic. His, he is somehow in all of this remained predictable. Do you know, like, a, he's never lost his temper once. He's always answered every question we've had with patience and enthusiasm. And he will end a shot going, cool, 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 and, and come and give some notes. And he's always, you know, ready to go. There was a lot of really intelligent people working with us to make sure this turns out as well as it possibly can. And that, that was really, really a blessing. He's been beaten. I left my guy in there, too. Oh, come on. Oh, my God.